Coming up this week on Kings of the Rings podcast, it should really sit through that Tyson and Paul match and thought you were going to get some entertainment. Welcome back to Real Sports Entertainment. Ladies and gentlemen, King Ricky and Willie T are going to talk about AEW going into full gear this weekend in New Jersey. And if there's one thing that you should know, that you never go full gear in New Jersey. Plus, WWE plans to storm Los Angeles for their first first live action Raw on Netflix. And oh yeah, the women's US title picture finally kind of has a tournament of sorts. All of that and more on episode number 394 of Kings of the Rings podcast exclusively on WrestleMania Radio. And it starts right now. Yeah, the best part of the fight was Tyson's ass. <laughs> Those cheeks, man. Honestly, it was just Mike telling us how that how that match was gonna go. It was just all going to be just all cheeks. I mean, yeah, I mean he had he had fucking a leg injury. He couldn't move properly. <laughs> yeah, that, like, that the, there was a lot of his the contract for that match apparently was really wonky. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah it, it was a disappointment. It was a disappointment. Well, uh but what'd you expect? The guy's fifty eight years yeah, old. Yeah, and he almost died in June, but you know, it is what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Kings of the Rings Podcast, episode number 394. I'm your host, King Ricky Rose. Thank you guys for joining us. We are live currently on Facebook, on uh, Twitch, and on YouTube. Thank you guys for joining us. If you guys like what you are watching, or if you're listening to us a couple of days later, please hit that like button wherever you are kind of consuming this wonderful, wonderful content. The links to all of our stuff and all of our social media is in the description below. With me, as always... A man who I can probably say in confidence is officially broke as a joke. Willie T, how are you? Oh, no, I'm not broke. Who said I was broke? I know the purchase you made. Oh, that, yeah, no, yeah, I am pretty broke. Yeah, yeah, you put it, let me put it like yeah. that. I kind of, you know, I kind of forgot I paid for it like six weeks ago, but <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh, it's me, it's me, it's Whitley T, and when I, when I say that at Tyson, uh, Jake Paul fight, I go, that's why I watch wrestling. My, my big super fights are scripted, so I'm never disappointed. Well, not now, WrestleMania 20, yeah. uh, yeah, I'm disappointed often, but you know, neither here nor there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, dude, it's going to be, uh, I'm glad we're back. Yeah. Uh, Miss Missing Kate Murphy, hope their headache feels better. But um, yeah, broke is a joke. Yeah, yep, that, that definitely. definitely. You know what You know what ticked me off about about the whole Netflix thing? And not even the buffering, because I didn't really have that much of a buffering issue. Uh, because, no, I mean, because I hardwired my device, because I'm not stupid. <laughs> um, but it was, number one, the commentary team. Awful. Awful. <laughs> Morrow, okay, okay, scratch that. Morrow, Morrow, amazing. Morrow, amazing. Outstanding. <laughs> yeah. uh, the 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 woman, I forget her name. Perez. Oh, Rosie Perez, Perez. like nineties legend Rosie, Rosie Perez. Perez. Yeah. yeah, she just didn't know anything about anything. And who which... wanted Cedric the Entertainer? Yeah, <laughs> bizarre. <laughs> Very bizarre. Very bizarre. And like n- none of the Buffer brothers were available. For me. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering that too. Like, I was expecting Bruce Buffer, but no. Like, I, at least Bruce Buffer just for the main event. Seriously. Because, or Michael, sorry, Michael Buffer. Michael Buffer just for the main yeah. event. Bruce Buffer is in a no compete with the UFC, a hundred percent for sure. <laughs> I think the best part about the pre show is I was going back and forth between SmackDown and Netflix. I my friend Sam came over. You know Sam from Jersey Sam. Yeah, yeah. he came yeah. over. That's how we watch because I don't have Netflix yet. Um, was when Shaq. When they interviewed Shaq, and he was like, me and Gronk are going to do a, a professional fighters league for, like, former and current athletes. And Gronk was like, yep, we're going to do that. It was like, did Shaq just make this up on the fly? Cause Sha- yep. <laughs> yes, he did. Because <laughs> Shaq is, I, I kind of wanted the inside the NBA team to do the pre-show. Like, Charles, Chuck, Kenny. And, uh, yeah, and dude, they, they could do the pre, sh- dude. They could do the pre-show for the puppy bowl, right? <laughs> like, no matter what they're pre-showing, it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, like the Miss Miss Universe, everything. They should just pre-show and post-show everything. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank God they got saved. They're gonna be on ESPN next year. Oh, thank. They God. made a deal. They, they, yeah, they made a deal with the NBA. Uh, yeah, dude, there's so much money to be made there. <laughs> like, <laughs> 
Yeah. So very, very, very much good for him. But let's get into let's go into real sports entertainment, not any of that BS you saw on on Netflix. Although we are going to have to be talking about Netflix because Lord Almighty, that stream for a lot of people was ass. And we're not talking about Mike Tyson's ass. But before, actually, let's go to that right now. Yeah, Netflix was has just announced WWE announced alongside Netflix that the first live action WWE Raw on Netflix is going to be storming your way on January 6th at the Intuit Tome <laughs> in LA. I see what you yeah, did yeah, there. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. I've been I've been holding on to that one for a while. Cuz like when I saw the announcement that they're like January 6th, I go, that's got to be a typo. That's got to be a typo. And I was like, "Oh no. Please tell me that's a typo." <laughs> I was like, "Nope. It is January 6th. Uh scheduled for the first ever live action Netflix, uh, John Cena, of course, uh, CM Punk, Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes. So it's going to be some sort of crazy super show. Also, for the first ever live action Raw on Netflix, you they are going to you're going to get a performance by Travis Hunter on t- oh. Travis Hunter, the guy we saw at a uh, Fanatics Fest in the Rey Mysterio mask. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yes, oh, Travis Tra- Hunter. Oh, that, yes, guy. that guy. Yes. He was also presented with a with a uh, updated version of the hardcore title, which was interesting. Um, as well. And Tra- a music by Travis Hunter will be the new raw theme music going into next year. Okay. Yeah. So I mean Tra- oh. one of Travis Hunter's songs is also kind of the working theme for WrestleMania as well, the Fiend uh Fiend uh song that we heard. Is also, also now you 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 know Trips was uh, watching that Tyson fight and then, like after it was over, calling someone on Netflix like that's that's gonna be fixed. Right? <laughs> <laughs> For off. I mean, because you know, I God knows how many millions of people watch that fight that aren't gonna be watching Monday Night Raw when it's live. Well, they said it was like um, sixty million worldwide. I yeah, I will sure mm-hmm. I could I could I could believe that. So yeah, Raw is gonna have like a twelfth of that if they're lucky. Yeah, watching it live. So they should be totally fine. Um, one thing I am concerned about, though, because uh, I'm pretty sure that the pay-per-views are still on Peacock. For America, yes. For America. Yes. So I don't like how WWE is going the route of the NFL, meaning, like, the licenses are across four different streaming platforms. Because, like, Netflix has that football game on Christmas Day, they too. Have two. And sometimes Netflix is on... Um, on, on, on Amazon. TV, sometimes it's on HBO, sometimes on Amazon. It's just like, guys, especially with wrestling, they have the library. It's like, is the Raw library going to come over to Netflix, but the SmackDown and like WCW is going to stay on Peacock? Like, what, what the fuck is happening here with all these rights to the content? Yeah. Like, God, f- fuck me, dude. Like, put it all in one place. Yeah, this. Like, I understand WWE wants multiple licensing deals to make that billions of dollars multiple times. So, from a business perspective, I get yeah. it. But from an organizational standpoint and like where all the content is going to be, disaster. it's a complete disaster. Yeah, yeah. I know that um, this is something we discussed when they had when they get when they had a the new slew of rights deals. So this might be just a temporary thing until they're out of their contracts with like Peacock and stuff. Like I, I think we predicted that within four or five years from now, everything will be on Netflix because probably yeah. and and I hope so. But if that was the case. Like, didn't they just do a SmackDown deal at the same time as the Raw deal? For USA, yeah. So I think this... USA. So why didn't Netflix just get them both? Netflix did get them both. So everything, everything, everybody outside of the United States is... Net, WWE's on Netflix for everything outside of the U.S. We're the only country that has these multiple deals. God fucking Christ. Yeah. So I actually have the the press release for when they're talking about um, when they're talking about this raw on Netflix. They said, "In this and the Monday Night Raw, Netflix will bring WWE's electrifying content to audiences outside of the U.S., including SmackDown, NXT, and premium live events such as Mania, Rumble, SummerSlam. These events can be seen on Netflix starting January 6th in most international markets around the world." So that's what's that's what's happening around the world. When we're going to get it, because I believe that the NXT and the SmackDown deals are about within four or five years. Because remember, the Netflix deal for Raw is about ten years with an opt out at five. So at that five at that five year mark, 
when those other two concerts drop, I, I predict everything will move. So by like 2030, everything will probably be on Netflix. On the States. Yeah. Yeah. Fretz is saying in the chat, everything will be on Netflix in Canada. Yeah, that's, that's exactly um, true. Which, God, I, I, I am very jealous. Yeah, one-stop shop. A one-stop shop. Because, yeah. Like now that I have to be subscribed to Peacock just for just for pay per views, mm-hmm. and like if I want to watch Nitro and ECW, now it's just annoying, and I have to watch Raw on Netflix. Yeah, they're also it stated, just doesn't it just doesn't make any sense. They're also saying that many of WWE Raw's top moments will be available to watch on Netflix. Netflix plus select programming and historic PLEs also available outside of the US from January starting January first, twenty twenty five. So we kind of have a shit end of the stick temp for a while. And I think one of the only things also holding us back from moving over to Netflix is that WWE still hasn't fulfilled their four <laughs> their four yeah. uh, primetime yeah, specials to, to, to NBC Peacock, which they've been which they, we finally got Saturday night's main event. Um we'll see how it goes. I mean, Netflix has a lot of potential because I mean they're they're obviously a massive subscription service, but they haven't had a good track record of doing things live. Like they really haven't. Well, they had the fight. They had a Joe Rogan comedy special, and then they had the roast of Tom Brady. Yeah, maybe a few other things I don't know about. But the the roast of Brady and the Rogan special went live with no issues. Probably because not many people watch. Not not as many people watch. Them. Yeah, like with that many people watching that around the world. Yeah, that's gonna happen. Yeah, because it's just the internet can only withstand so much. Yeah. And in so, all of our service, you know, it's, not, it's not like it's not like cable where everything's kind of coming from like your individual house or whatever yeah. your provider. It's all coming from one place. As opposed to cable is from multiple. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to how WWE like feeds this too, because like we've said this before, WWE control like has all of our stuff. They just essentially just send over the content, to, and the content kind of just you know the provider just kind of you know, they, they they sift through they, it and organize yeah. it. Yeah. So Hope, hopefully Netflix has a better organizational system for um, their shows. Like on Peacock, I was trying to watch. Yeah, the Peacock uh, system is kind of Rock. messed up because it's all in like seasons it's, and episodes. I'm like, that's not really like how this goes, but okay. <laughs> yeah, it well because it's it's diff because it makes sense with all their other programming. It doesn't make sense with the rest of them. Yeah, but also um, it got to a point where they skipped an episode. So I was on on like my raw watching. I was on the go home show for state for Canadian Stampede in 1997, uh-huh. and so that was supposed to be June 30th, 1997. But I put on the June 30th, 1997 episode, and it's actually the next episode. It's the day after Canadian Stampede, huh. but the date is this not the same. It's the wrong date, but the wrong it's the wrong date and the wrong show. Oh boy. So I'm like, what is what is going on here? Why is this episode of Raw just skipped? It's not on the Pro Network at all. It's nowhere. It might be. It's like the and like the the thumbnails are all messed up and the the dates are wrong. You know what that might be and, from? Yeah, it's a mess. Remember when we had that whole episode about how when we discovered that Peacock was reserving the right to like censor some of the content or take stuff away? That's probably what happened. Yeah. Yeah, they took the whole episode away. Um, I know that they've edited out segments like you're not going to see DX, you're not going to see X Pac and Blackface when they end the person the nation. That's yeah. not like that episode will be there, but that segment, segment won't is be there, edited yeah. out. Yeah, or like Thursday Raw Thursday, um, a lot of those were taken out or edited down because mm-hmm. it was on a different day or whatever. Yeah. So it just it's a mess. The network was so perfect because it had everything RIP the organized network. I miss perfectly. The ne- I miss the network so much every damn day. Yeah. I get yeah. it, money talks. The other interesting thing about this as well, uh, some international folks on social media sites have been leaking what the what the apparent ratings for all the shows on Netflix are going to be. So currently, WWE Raw is going to be rated on Netflix at TV 14. Um, SmackDown, yeah, makes sense. SmackDown apparently at TV MA, which is hysterical because it's still going to be like, you know, still going to be on network tv here and then uh nxc is going to be like tv pg yeah that makes sense yeah so all that we'll see how it goes i mean i i expect raw to be obviously more raw because they don't have to deal with censors and stuff it's going to be on netflix yeah um smackdown will be yet to be determined but we'll definitely see what happens with that also not to be outshot i totally forgot to add this to you but ring of honor is doing a special and at at the manhattan center just in case anybody cared Final battle is no, going to be at the Manhattan Center. 
You know, Good headlined by Chris Jericho, of course. The current ROH champion. Naturally. Naturally. Natu- naturally. Naturally, of course. I just, I just want to put it in there because, you know, Ring of Honor. Anywho, moving on, we finally have an idea of what's going on with the Women's United States Championship uh, title scene. It is going to be a tournament. Surprise, surprise. When you don't have anything else to do, give them a tournament. So every tournament opening <laughs> round is a triple threat match. Uh, breaking down into a singles match in the semis and then the finals will be done uh, at Saturday night's main event uh, on Long Island at the Nassau Coliseum, uh, which kind of was like, damn it, now I kind of want to (laughs) go now to see the first ever champion. Uh, The first matchup was already kind of done. Uh, Bailey beat Candice LeRae and BFAB, who actually didn't look that bad, so Bailey has advanced to the semis. Uh, Your other triple threats are Bianca, Chelsea Green, and Blair Davenport. Then you have Jade versus uh, Jade, Meechin, Mia Yim, and Piper Nibbin. And then Naomi, Tiffany Stratton, and Electra Lopez. So Bailey already advancing. Let's do a quick little bracketology here. Uh, who do you got for this tournament, Will? Uh, probably Bailey. You know, you want to give the first one to someone established, mm-hmm. right? To kind of set the, set the path for that belt. And Bailey's been there forever. She's the only one left of the four horsewomen that's active right Until now. Until Charlotte in returns. WWE. Until Charlotte returns or Becky comes back. Um, so, but Bailey has been there forever. She is rarely injured, you know, locker room leader. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think she's the right person to kind of give this belt to. But other than that, you know, it could go a few different ways. Who else we got there? Not Candace. Not, well, she already Candace lost. and Beef have lost. lost. To Bailey, they're all triple yeah. threats in the in the opening round. So, is that Naomi on the right? No, did they have that match too? Naomi, Naomi Tiffy, and Alexa that did not occur yet. Oh, t- Tiffy has the beef cased. Uh, I can also see Naomi taking it. Mm-hmm. Same same reasons, right? She's been there forever, locker room leader. Be a great way to um, cap off her her year back. Yeah, very consistent. Been back a full year, and then you also have don't you have those have Jade and Jade Mia Yim and Piper Nevin right. on the top right? Yeah. Mm, no, Jade has the tag belt though. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go with Naomi or Bailey. Establish stars; it makes the most sense. Yeah. So for me, I think Bailey's in. I think I don't think you give it the Blair, but I actually think Chelsea Green advances over Bianca. So you, yeah, I think Chelsea Green advances because like you have Jade and Bianca, and they. They're doing a lot of work with those tag tiles, and I don't want to. I don't think this tournament is set up for them to like break up. Like a lot of people are thinking, "Oh, what if you get Jade and Bianca in the finals?" I don't think that's actually happening. I think it's just tease that they're on different sides of the bracket. So I think Bailey goes to the semi. I think Chelsea Green advances. I think Mia Yim advances as well. Meech and Mia Yim advance. So I don't think Jade and Bianca make it out of the first round. Um, and then. Tiff- yeah, that'd be smart because you don't want you don't want either of them to take a pin, exactly. so they don't have to. It's triple threats. Yeah. you know, it could be something like I, I like I see the Jade Meechin and Piper Niven matches. Like Jade hits one of her finishers because she just she just developed a new one on Piper Niven. You know, feet of strength. Mia Yim, yeah. Mia Yim, you know, pushes Jade out and gets the pin. You know, something. Like Chelsea about. Green winning that belt though would be really. I funny. want Chelsea Green to win so badly. Uh same thing with Tippy. Tippy already has a strap. She's also going to be in War Games. Um, she has the briefcase. Yeah, like anyone in War Games, because when's when's this finals? When did they announce when the finals? Saturday night's main. Oh, Saturday night's main event. So it's like two weeks afterwards. Yeah. Um. Like here's the here's, yeah. Here's I the I wouldn't card. give. Tiffy can lose and still cash in and win. Yeah, I know you talked about that in the Discord yeah. the other day. Um. I mean, she could to nod your title, yeah. right? So that's a good reason to do it. That's a reason to do. It. I wanted to make history. Yeah, bam. I like, I like, like for my final four, I like Bailey, Chelsea Green, Naomi, and Mia Yim, and then in that finals, Chelsea. Like, ideally, it, if you want something brand new, Chelsea versus Mia Yim, which I think is a great highlight of two women who haven't really been highlighted in one-on-one matches. To see what they yeah, can do. Yeah, but they're both really good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Problem with Chelsea Green winning though is that her gimmick is a joke. I'm not saying she is a joke, mm-hmm. but her her role on TV is being fun and funny and a joke. Yeah. So do you want that to set the tone of your brand new title belt? Like, do you want people to take this seriously, 
We want it to be a little more lighthearted and fun, which is Chelsea Green. It depends. That's not a knock no, on Chelsea not. Green. It's not a champion. It's not a championship gimmick. It, it's one of those things where she is like Chelsea's a heel. She's a lovable heel. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I think what she can do if she does win, and I hope she does, especially with all the work she did this year, she can lead into the fact that I'm Canadian that won a U.S. title. Like she can be very, be really funny. Yeah, she yeah. can be very, no, 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 that yeah. would work. She can be that would very, work. that would actually yeah. really work. <laughs> she could be like, it <laughs> would, would be, be like good. the United States of Kevin Owens run, which is a fantastic run as short as it was. Which is, yeah. yeah. I am the United, I'm the champion of America. Exactly. Uh, yeah. It was great. <laughs> exactly. But yeah. But he was a more douchebag hero. She's more funny. She can still heel. be funny yeah. heel, but funny, annoying, funny, heel. annoying heel. Yeah. yeah. I think they'd work for her. So, and I like, ideally I think, I would love to see Chelsea Green, Mia Yim, highlight them. It's Saturday Night's main event. It's essentially a one-off show, you know. And they and they've been feuding for the past few months. Like that that that, it that works. Uh, vignette when she was looking for Mia Yim in the dumpster. Oh yeah, they called they called, <laughs> called her trash bag Chelsea. <laughs> yeah, it was ridiculous. I was watching at home, and mom was like, "Will, what the fuck is this?" <laughs> I'm like, "You don't get it. I'm sorry. <laughs> you walked it at the wrong me time." Live, mom, let me live. <laughs> Yeah, I like it. Like, if we're going to give these women opportunity, give women who have done a lot of work but have never really gotten a championship opportunity, I think Chelsea Green and Miriam. I think real more realistically, it'll be Naomi versus Chelsea Green. Uh, I still go with Chelsea Green. Yeah, winning. I mean, it's I, I honestly, it's I honestly, I think it's going to be Naomi Bailey or Chelsea Green Piper. I, I think Piper is going to go over in that first round. Ooh, Piper's yeah. a good choice. Like, I too. like, I like, I like me Chin, but Piper. P- Piper needs something. Understand. She needs a little pep in her step. And it could, and that could be something to hold over Chelsea. Like you can break yeah, him up exactly. that way too. Exactly that too. Like if Piper just walks off this belt and Chelsea's just like, but what? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? 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 Like it would work. It would. It would. I like where this is going. This has a lot of this has a lot of different possibilities. So we'll see if it goes. This the women's U.S. title, and I kind of want to go to main event. I kind of want to see the first champion of something. Like I'm very intrigued by it. I don't want to spend the money to what's, go. To, what's the date? December fourteenth. Uh, I have a holiday party. It's not gonna be <laughs> yeah, my holiday party is the the day before, and, and and things like that. But we'll we'll see what happens. Uh, moving on to the reason for the season that we're here. AEW's full gear is this Saturday in Newark, New Jersey. Yes, I know. I don't want to go there either. Um, is going to be at the Rock River, New Jersey Devils play. I was there once for an event. Um, and I. I wish I wasn't there for it. That was the, what was the event I was there for? It was like the first ever co-branded pay-per-view that they did, like the second time around. It was like. What, AEW? No, 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 WWE. Remember when they went back and they did like the co-branded paper, they did the pay-per-views together. Like they went from doing separate pay-per-views and then they did, they they were like, oh, we're all going to be together again. It was the one after 34, WrestleMania 34. Was this in like 2017? 2018. It was after 34 when Nia had won the title. It was like, oh, it was the Shinsuke and AJ when they kicked the, when they kicked each other in the nuts. Right. God. Yeah. That feud. <laughs> yeah. RIP to that feud, man. Yeah. It was that one. It left a and it was it was a it was a really bad one. It's a really, really bad experience. Last time I was at the rock. It's what New it's what Newark deserves. I don't know what it is about Newark, dude, but the whole city just smells. It is a stinky city. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's bad. But anyway, full gear is going on, so we're gonna go through this. We're gonna do some predictions. Uh, Will, I believe you are still leading because we did not do Crown Jewel because you were away. Uh, K- yeah, you got. I, I told you, I remember. It's like, yeah, they didn't ask me my. I was watching Crown Jewel. It's like, oh yeah, Ricky didn't ask me my picks. <laughs> yeah, I, I forgot. Yeah, you're still in the lead by eight, actually. Wow, that's a big lead. That's like a whole card. It, it, it's a whole AEW <laughs> card lead. Yeah, with, with, with not much left to go. We got Survivor Series, we got Deadline, we got World's End. So you got three three more after this. Oh, I'm in a comfortable so, lead. What's the magic number now? <laughs> What's the magic number? I don't number? know what the magic number is, but we're definitely going <laughs> to find out. So the first event on this card is the AEW World Championship. John Moxley is putting his title on the line against Orange Cat. So ever since John Moxley retired Brian Danielson, he has, because I know you don't watch AEW and I've been following a little bit more. John Moxley has, tell me where you've heard this before, started doing a hostile takeover of AEW. Why? 
I thought I thought that's what the Young Bucks were doing. No, no, no. The Young Bucks are the EVPs. I thought that's what the Bullet Club was doing. <laughs> right. I thought that's like what, what half the storylines in his company are. No, I'm in charge of the company. <laughs> So the Young Bucks have pretty much like separated themselves and have taken their ball and gone home while John Moxley runs rampant again with this hostile takeover of AEW. So and John Moxley's group is called the Death Riders we, with Marina Shafir, Willard Yuta, um, and Claudio Castillo. We're, we're having a combat club. William Regal's in a William Regal's in NXT. I know, but I thought they were still the combat club after he left forever. Weren't they? Weren't they the combat they were, club? Now with Moxley's Danielson? taking over, and now we're the Death Riders. So this is the same. It's the so the only difference between the uh, faction is that Daniel Bryan retired, so he decided to do a whole rebrand. Pretty much. Great. It's also Love like if you, if watching AEW. It's like oh, Def Riders versus Team AEW, and like in all of a sudden, it's like oh my god, this is just NW all over again. They sure just call them aces and nines. <laughs> <laughs> you know how bad it got so they had a whole fight between AEW like originals or whatever and the Death Riders in the middle of the show I was like why didn't this end the show and out of nowhere Darby Allen descends from the rafters in a pink coat I go goodness fucking gracious you're just you just want to be sting so badly <laughs> a pink coat though it's a gay sting <laughs> I know Darby Allen has just played a gay sting. <laughs> I'm going to beat you with my bat. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, Seidberg, real quick. Have you, <laughs> have you been following the rise of, like, the Kane family? The Kane family? So there, like, are, people like on the, Jacobs? there are people on the Indies who are doing variations of Kane. So there's I love it. so there's a there's a character called Gain, which is gay cane, and like it's the cane suit, but in rainbows. <laughs> okay. There's blue cane. There's a cane who has the, whose whose suit is all white and his name is Cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> cocaine. <laughs> yeah. I think that's all of for now. Like the, the cane family is a whole thing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. Keep it. Give me. Give me more. Feed me more. <laughs> more canes. So there's a whole family of canes out there. But anywho, uh, Orange Cassidy representing AEW is going to try to stop John Moxley from his whole hostile takeover of AEW. And unfortunately for Orange Cassidy, he's about three years too late because I still can't take him seriously, even though he's cutting more generic promos now. God, I think I think mine would be Candy Cane. There might be a candy cane. I'm not sure. It's just, it's just a Willy Wonka gimmick. <laughs> Come with me and you'll be pinched to the count of one, two, three. <laughs> Raise my hand. I'm the man. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. <laughs> In victory. <laughs> you got to write that one down. <laughs> Dude, I don't need to. It's all on top of my head. Um, yeah, so I'd be candy cane. Yeah, I mean, I, but anyway, Orange Cassidy. Um yeah, I, Orange Cassie needs an evolution because there's only so much that fake kicks guy can go. And now that he's been mainstream on mainstream television for what, better part of four years yeah. now, he needs to evolve into something a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But if this more is going to be a little more generic, I don't know. It's tough. Like Orange Cassie is a gimmick that works so well on the indies. Oh, it's perfect for the indies. That, it's just it's it, it's it's hard to translate into prime time, um, and it got over. It worked for a while, but after a while, there is a candy cane wrestle. Thank you, friends. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, what's what's his motivation? Like, oh, he wears denim more. Okay. Yeah. His motivation um, right now is he's going to save AEW from from the Death Riders. He's stepping what? up, That's cool. even though he doesn't want to. Even though he's not a one to step up, he has to be the one to step up. God, is he is he the hero AEW needs, not the one it deserves? <laughs> is he Batman? Yes, kind of. <laughs> he's, a, he's a denim Batman. This is what he is. God, and John Moxley over there looking like Tommy Pickles going through a midlife crisis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he actually looks like he's in like he's he's got a poop, but he doesn't know if he's already pooped yet. Like you see that face yeah. on him right now? Like he looks like I've got to take a really bad dump, but I think I might have done it already. He looks like Cesaro with alcoholism. <laughs> That's a good one, actually. <laughs> That's a really, really good one. Um, but yeah, I Cesaro got fired from AEW and just went straight to the pub. <laughs> <in the movie. laughs> 
His wife took the kids. It was really, it was really <laughs> funny. I think on Dynamite, uh, John Mox was cutting a promo, and obviously they they got some of the crowd batter banter. Someone literally <laughs> yelled while Mox was promoing, "Go back to Roman." <laughs> <laughs> Go back to Roman. <laughs> do I do like scrolling Facebook and it's like these fake wrestling memes? It's like John Moxley returns to be the fifth man in War Games. And it's the Shield fist bump. It's just a bad Photoshop. It was the it was like the anniversary of the Shield the other day. It was yeah, yeah. November like eighteenth or seventeenth like or something. Yeah. Wild twelve years. Absolutely. But yeah, I see Mox. Run- but yeah, Mox Moxley Moxley yeah. takes Mox this. is running with this for a, yeah. for a little bit longer. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's that's nothing need to be said there. I hope it goes well. I'm not really excited for this pay per view. There's only like one or two matches. I'm kind of excited for everything else. I'm like, yeah, okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, the team. It's be a great match. I think it's gonna be fine. Yeah. Uh, the TBS Championship. Mercedes Monet is putting her title on the line against Chris Statlander. Long Island's own Chris Statlander. Chris Statlander is only relevant when it comes to the TBS Championship, apparently, because you can't go higher than that for some odd <laughs> reason. <laughs> And Mercedes is just full heel being doing what Mercedes does. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason to it. I think Mercedes almost ran over Chris Statlander one week on Dynamite, which is kind of funny. And then Chris Statlander uh, speared her through a fake wall backstage nice. last week. Um, Who's that behind Mercedes? Who's that's that Camille. Her? That's her heavy. Nice. Yeah. Who Statlander beat the other week? So like there, there is there's something to this feud. Um, I just don't see Statlander's character being strong enough to beat Mercedes. Like, Mercedes' character is all in your face, all about her. Like, very boisterous, very heelish. What you would think somebody who named Mercedes Monet would would do. Um, but I just don't believe Statlander as much as a baby face. I don't know if it's the way she cuts yeah. her promos or something. Like, it just it doesn't work for me. Like, she's a great performer. We Will and I used to watch her on the indies. Like, she was the alien with pointing and stuff. You know, like, she she had something yeah, go. Yeah, she booped people. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I found interesting before, as I was researching before I did the show, is that uh, Mercedes Monet and or Sasha Banks has never had a title run go over 200 days. Whether in WWE or AEW, she's at like 194 at the time of uh, full gear. Because uh, she had that back and forth with Charlotte a lot, so they could pad both of their title champions. Yeah, their 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 champion count. So that when Charlotte comes back, oh, it's a seven time champion, Charlotte Flair. Yeah. I mean, don't get me oh, wrong, I loved that bunch. feud. They were fun. They were creative. It yeah. was no, that was that was that actually was really good television. Because yeah. remember, like that that last woman standing match, where Sasha had her in the um, the bank statement in the in, in the crowd, in the bank statement, and like in in against like the guardrail yeah. or something. Yeah, I was like, Whoa. like the hand the handrail. Yeah, yeah, I was like, that was amazing. Yeah, I mean, no, it was it was a great feud, and they ended in a hell of a cell. Yeah, um, but yeah, Sasha was like what Sasha never had a title defense until twenty twenty. Something oh successful one yeah, successful title defense until twenty twenty something, something like that. crazy. Yeah. So it's a shame because she is, I mean, she was and still is, well, at least was in WWE, the Shawn Michaels of the women's division. She can do and anything, yeah. if I watched her now, I'm sure I'd say very, very similar things because the, 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 talent, the talent has definitely caught up to her, but she's still above and beyond one of the greatest, greatest female wrestlers of all time. Yeah. So is she acting like the, uh, the mid-card champion who thinks she's the main event? Yes. Perfect. Yeah, that's her yeah, character. She's keeping the belt. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's what it should yeah. be. I, yeah, I, I like I said, I think I think she's keeping it. Like, if it, you got to find somebody like she's hated, but she's not hate. It's one of those things like she's she's hated by people, but she's not hated enough in character to be like I want someone else to go over her. And, there's, and I don't think there's no there's no baby face baby face built up enough in AEW to like be like yeah. take out Mercedes. You know what I mean? Well, does she have X Pac heat? Like, is it good heat? I can't tell. I can't tell if they don't like her character or if they just are finding an excuse not to like her as a person for like no discernible reason. They, so you know what it is they, they they want her in WWE. That's what, <laughs> that's what it is. They want her in WWE. That's what it is. You know. So we'll we'll definitely see what happens. I mean, even Britt Baker's not even built up well enough to even take out Mercedes. Because she's so nice in person. Oh, Mercedes, oh yeah, she's she's absolutely great in person. Like in an in an interview, she's very humble. Like I don't see her having. A massive ego in person or being difficult to deal with backstage. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's one of those things where a lot of people 
a, well, a fair amount of marks aren't able to discern the character from the person. Like in meeting Mercedes like a year or so ago, I'm like, oh, you're actually a wonderful person. You just play a yeah. bitch on TV because that's just the character yeah. you are. What's funny, the people who play the assholes on or TV like the are nicest people. Really people. Yeah. <laughs> and the people who play the really nice people are typically the assholes. Yeah. So so it's good. Yeah, I, I don't see I don't see Mercedes dropping this. And congratulations, it gets over two hundred days with that belt. Uh, so there's that. Moving on, we have a TNT title, Jack Perry, who's the most emo person alive versus Daniel <laughs> Garcia. Do you know Jack Perry shows up to all the AEW events now in a spray painted all black short bus, <laughs> like a small bus <laughs> where he belongs <laughs> <laughs> and he spray painted on a scapegoat. He's this dude's too online. <laughs> Like I, I love how they used his whole thing from all or from all in a couple of years ago and how he essentially kind of like got demoted to New Japan for a while and was named the scapegoat as like the story. Like it's actually a brilliant idea, you know, but something about that is not hitting. Daniel Garcia is doing his best. Um, but I think it's also one of these issues where I don't see Daniel Garcia being built up as a baby face enough to take out Jack. AEW has a baby face problem, it seems like. Yeah, they do good heels. They do good heels. Yeah. Also, da Daniel Garcia looks like he used to be an Abercrombie and Fitch like model. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like one of those shirtless guys that stand outside. <laughs> Did you ever watch the uh the Abercrombie documentary on Netflix? No, I saw the trailer though, but it looked pretty bonkers. I was like, I'm gonna it's skip this one. I don't want to be kind depressed. Of nuts. <laughs> yeah, what's probably fucking wild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, that's what he looks like. He looks like he was starring in that movie. Their were absolutely atrocious. Yeah, they probably didn't exist. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, I liked Jack. I liked Jungle Boy. I don't know if I would like this Jack Perry because it is, it is a natural progression. Like he looks like he's actually doing really good work despite his photo. Yeah. Um, but I'm gonna go Garcia on this one. Ah, okay. We gotta switch it up a little bit. We might get a new champion. There's only actually eight matches on this card so far, so we're like we are halfway done right here, Will. And the next match on this card is Hangman Adam Page looking like a psychotic person as ever versus a very happy Jay White, and he's very happy, to, <laughs> very happy to be back. He it looks like Jay White is saying you've won a brand new car and like the Price is Right or something like that. God, he looks like Andrew Schultz. Oh. <laughs> the beard. oh. Really? A little bit. Andrew, I I don't see it. I'll be honest with you. I don't see Andrew Schultz with a beard. Uh, this is pretty much a blood feud. Hangman Page kind of left Jay White out to dry. I believe Hangman Page was the reason that Jay White got injured. Um, God, does Hangman have any other kind of feuds other than blood feuds? No. <laughs> no. I like. I feel like Hangman get Page is like in this picture is like really regretting that he signed that five-year contract. <laughs> you know, because like... This is only, like, Hangman Page's character is such a weird, like, it's an uncomfortable character. Like, it's supposed to be uncomfortable. But I'm just like, why do you, why are you mad at everybody? Like, you won the world title twice. Like, what is going on? He's like, man, I could be on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be the hardcore champion, not Travis Scott. <laughs> Something like that. Um, My thing here is... I've been I'm kind of half paying attention to this view because it kind of really means nothing. It's more of a TV feud than anything. Um, good good point, friend. Watch Dynamite announce like four more matches tomorrow. I am they probably will. They probably will. But I'm I'm gonna go with Jay White. He's recently back. He needs a quality win. Beating Hangman Page would be a quality win to reestablish Jay White as somebody who's relevant in this AEW scene whatsoever. So I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go with Jay White. I'm going to go with Hangman. I think Hangman still needs to bounce back after uh, losing the feud with Swerve. Even though not as great as the feud as it allegedly was, I didn't watch. But uh, probably feud of the year, if people are being honest. It is. Yeah, I think it was feud of the year. Hangman and Swerve. I mean, without Hangman and Swerve's feud, Swerve doesn't become the number two in the PWI. Definitely. You know, so like it did what it needs to. He was number two. Good he for was him. number two, yeah. Number two. Good for him. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm going with Hangman. I always liked Hangman. I think, and respect for him being a company man. I know we dig on him for not signing a, for signing a five year deal, yeah. but there's something about respecting to the ones who bring you up. Yeah. So, no, I, I get it. No props to him. If he's happy, 
Looking at you, Soto. <laughs> he hasn't even done anything yet. He's just been having meetings. I know, he, 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 no, no, no. He, he declined the $20 million preliminary offer from the Yankees. Oh, the He's qualifying offer. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> the qualifying <laughs> offer. You know, the one that's just, that one's just for show. Yeah. The one that's just like procedural <laughs> means nothing. Yeah. Yeah, that that's fine. But yeah, Hangman Page J White should be interesting. The match that I'm really excited for is speaking of Swerve, it's Swerve Strickland versus Bobby Lashley in his debut match. Oh, Ooh. yeah, Ooh. yeah. And we talked about the Hurts and the Kit returning and MVP giving out cards to a bunch of talent. One of the cards they gave it to was Swerve Strickland. Okay, and MVP had gotten Prince Nana's face and was like, you're holding him back with that dumbass dance and all of the stuff. You can be taken more seriously, blah, 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 blah. They've kind of been. Are they heels? Hurts in the Yes, they are. Okay. You know, they there was a big event in New York. I think it was on Long Island. I totally missed it. Where Prince Nana was there and like Shelton and Bobby and MVP were also there. And so they ran the angle at the event and they like they like courted Prince Nana. <laughs> like at the event. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> and things like that. So Swerve had an offer from MVP and them, and Swerve declined it to stay with Prince Nana and be loyal, like we were just saying, loyal to the people who helped bring you up. And they had a problem with that. So that's the entry point. And Bobby is it's Bobby versus Swerve which I'm super excited for. I don't know how this is going to go. Conventional Wisdom says Bobby wins because it's its first match in the company. Um, and you need to establish the Hurt Syndicate as a threat more than outside of the ring, which was kind of what WWE's problem was. Uh, yeah, you also, you need, um, he needs to win by shenanigans by adding a new member to the Hurt Syndicate. I agree. Like, I agree. That I have no idea who that's going to be. But Swerve can eat an L here, and then the chase is on. Yeah, absolutely, I, I, absolutely. This is this has like been. You, you need the heat for the babyface to overcome. Yeah. So this is the place to this do is, it. This is this is my favorite feud going on in AEW. It has so much depth. It could go a lot of different ways. So they've been handing out cards everywhere. Like Mercedes got a card. Leo Russ got a card. Um, one of the members of the acclaimed got a card. Um, if you're black, you get a card. <laughs> uh, I forget, I forgot. They've been just handing out cards to everybody. So I believe, I do believe someone is popping up and screwing over Swerve. Yeah. For this. Hangman. <laughs> Hangman. Hangman. He's like, thanks for the card MVP. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> just like totally out of left field. He becomes like the Owen Hart of a Hurt Syndicate. <laughs> God. <laughs> Jason Sensation, he's going to join Hurt Syndicate. So we're both going Bobby here. Yeah, I'm going to go. Yeah, both going Bobby here. Have you have you looked at Bobby's social media yet? So no, I was raving. no, I'm sure it's great. I, I, was I raving about this with you? No. Oh, so Bobby's whole social media run now is that he's he's running a series where he goes and finds the best burger in all the towns that he travels to. Oh, no, you did. No, you did yeah. tell me that. Yeah, you told me that. I think last week. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, the joy on his face. Every time he buys Man two burgers. burgers. I, mean, I mean, who doesn't love a That's burger? That's true. I get it. I get it. I get it. It's like when Miz was doing that cuisine show. and <laughs> No, it was no. at first it was Biggie, and then it was Miz. Miz did it in Saudi Arabia. Oh, yeah? Biggie, I think, Biggie, I think did it in Atlanta. It was like a cuisine or something. Interesting. On the, it was part of the pre-show. Weird, weird. Interesting. Okay. But, oh, were they like trying local cuisine? Yeah, it's just, you know, it's it's part of the uh, the Saudi Arabia good PR. We're not a crazy country okay. tour. Okay. I mean, other other pre-shows I've done before, like uh, college football is notorious for that. Like college game day. They'll have like. Oh, the st stadium food? No, it's not stadium food. So they'll have um, Max Caster was it. Thank you. Uh, MVP handed Max Caster via claim the card. Um, no, also on college game day, they'll have like the best restaurant, their best barbecue restaurant or whatever in town. They'll make like these, tr these like three massive plates of food for the host and like during a commercial break they get they just get shelled out to them and they just like put it right in front of them pat mcafee goes crazy because he's probably high and he's just like chomping at the bits like cakes and pies it's it's crazy stuff on, on college game day uh moving on from this we're both going bobby here uh mjf versus roderick strong i know what you're thinking why not adam cole uh so adam cole came back he wants mjf 
Roderick Strong was like, hey, MJF screwed me over too. I want him as well, even though we're kind of bros in the Undisputed Empire, whatever the fuck they're calling Undisputed Light. Um, (laughs) You know, so MJF was like, hey, I'm not going to face either one of you. You know, I'm not going to face both of you guys at the same time. He says this while getting a massage in a video promo. (laughs) <laughs> he's like getting a massage with some random chick like it's great heel work of like I don't care about either of you guys um, and so the stipulation was the first person will get three consecutive wins will face me at full gear and then MJF uh, hired hired some help to make sure that Adam Cole did not get his third win in a row so now we have Roderick Strong versus MJF eh who cares <laughs> I don't, here's the thing, it should have been Adam Cole, there should be a way to sneak Adam Cole into this, because... Is he healthy? Yeah, he's perfectly fine. He's been doing good. He's doing good. The thing about it is, this is not Roderick Strong's story. So Uh, why are we delaying this story if we know it's supposed to be Adam Cole in the first place, you know what I mean? Oh, well, Full Gear, I guess, isn't one of the major pay-per-views. It's one of the original four. Yeah, well. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, didn't the Exploding Death Water Barbara Ryan match happen in Full Gear? I, I don't remember. I, I try not to remember. Not a great track record. I try record. not to remember when that match occurred. <laughs> <laughs> I still, like, I can still see that ending vividly. Be like, this is a disaster. <laughs> Absolute disaster, but for here, I'm going to go MJF unless something wacky happens. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, MJF. I think Bigger star. Yeah. Or go with the bigger star. Yeah, usually, especially so close to Long Island. He's gonna totally going to, you know, talk it up. And crap on you. Like, Roddy's right. Like, the problem with Roddy Strong has always been his issue. Roddy can't talk. Roddy can wrestle his feet. Face yeah, off. Yeah, he's never been a good promo. Yeah, Roddy can wrestle his face off. I love watching Roderick Strong wrestle. I don't want to hear him speak. That's that's the thing with Roddy. <laughs> that's why he was so good in in undis, in um in the undisputed era, because Adam Cole can talk circles around people. And Roddy just yeah, so can MJF. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and so that that's where Roddy kind of lacks, and I think yeah, MJF with this one. So moving on to <laughs> to a battle of former best friends, uh, Kyle Fletcher is essentially the reason that Will Osprey does not have an international title anymore. And Kenosuke Takeshita does. Kyle turned on Will Osprey and joined Don Callis. Kyle Fletcher also in an act of rebellion. Cut all of, all of his hair, so now he looks like every generic kid from the 90s and early 2000s with that buzz cut haircut and that little oh, silver God. chain. Look at him. Look at him. Who the fuck is Kyle Fletcher? He's someone up and cutting that Will Ospreay kind of brought up. They were kind of in, um, I want to say Aussie Open. They were in a faction together on the indies. Kyle Fletcher brought uh, over. He's going over. You know. Um, I Kyle Fletcher's going over. I like what they're doing with Kyle. He's very talented in the ring. He's got more of a character. He's got his heel persona is really having him stand out from Will Ospreay, who kind of, in my opinion, is fine, but I don't like to hear Will Ospreay speak. Like sometimes his promos kind of fall short. Although he had a good promo against Kyle Fletcher the other week. Uh, be that as it may, Kyle Fletcher's going over. You need to develop. You need to make Will Ospreay seem a little bit more sad that he's losing people around him. Granted, they also blew. My friends don't like me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Also, don't forget, they also blew the load on Osprey and Ricochet because they did it already. Um, so you gotta, you gotta give something different. And there's also, there's also a possibility, you know, going back a little bit, there's also a possibility of Ricochet joining the Hurt Syndicate, which I believe is exactly what the hell he needs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I would love, Ricochet always already wears suits anyway, so it kind of works out. So I like Ricochet joining the Hurt Syndicate, but be that's me, I think Kyle Fletcher, you develop this new star. Will Ospreay's a made man. He's got all this goddamn money. He can do something for Kyle Fletcher. I'm going to go with Kyle. Yeah, same. Yeah. Kyle Fletcher all the way. Yeah, it's his friend. He's going to put He's a friend, no name guy on a pay per view. Yeah, he's winning. Yeah. Yeah. Make Will Ospreay a little bit more sad. Last but not least, can you believe we actually finished the whole AEW card, Will? 
whole, we did a whole it. card because there's only eight matches. That was fast. The AEW World Tag Team Champions is on the line. The Champions Private Party because it took five years for an AEW original team to win the tag titles. Private Party <laughs> is put, That's funny. putting their titles on the line against the Kings of the Black Throne, a.k.a. House of Black, Brody King, and Aleister Black or Malachi Black versus the Outrunners, which, Will, I know you do not know who the Outrunners are. I'll explain to you who they are in two seconds. They are a gimmick 80s-style tag team. God, they look like they're in the aerobics exercise videos with Richard Simmons. Yes, pretty much. Got it. Nailed it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They also have 80 style promo and an 80 style look. Also versus the acclaimed in a fatal four way for the tag team championships. This is an. Is that Brody King in the back? Yeah, Brody King and Malachi Black for the House of Black or King of Black Throne. Um, if we are, here's my thing. The acclaimed, I think, are going to break out. I think Max Caster of all people is probably going to, um, is probably going to join the Hurts again at some point. Yes, Fred, that's actually a great analogy. The Outrunners are the Mega Powers. They're a gimmicked yeah. Mega Powers, <laughs> aka the oldest men alive. Yes. Um, if you're going to run with private part and actually giving them their just due and actually being a tag team champion or a tag team that you're supposed to highlight because, you know, the whole AEW thing of we're going to highlight new talent when we develop this thing and, like, just gave it to the Young Bucks the whole time. Um, I think you have to have private party win this. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, usually when it's like a big thing like this, a giant clusterfuck, usually the champions retain. So... Other than that, I, I thought I thought the people that thought Alistair Black was, was uh, Malachi Black was like Tony Storm for a second. Black <laughs> um, I thought it was Tony Storm. What? I mean, from afar, it looks like Tony Storm or, or things in black and white. Although I do like the acclaims. I do. I fuck it. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with the acclaims. Go acclaim. I like. I think the acclaim. Go with the acclaims. I, acclaim have... I, got, I got eight points to spare, Ricky. Right? That's I'm gonna go true. That's true. You, you just want to make it close at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right. He just give, give something, give me something to fight for. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I just think the acclaimed are on their last leg. That's how, that's how they're, that's how we're doing it uh, for right now. Not like the new day, which I think the whole new day being on our last leg is kind of a swerve. Yeah, that whole uh, Kofi and Xavier thing is, it's a slow burn to something. Yeah, because they and I am interested. They're coming up on ten years as the new day. And I think when they hit the 10 year mark, which I think is like next week, I think something's going to either be revealed. God, Biggie attacks Kofi and it's Xavier and Biggie. Like Xavier, I don't know, Biggie probably can't wrestle, but uh, he can be his, be the he heavy. Can be his manager. That would be crazy if Biggie attacks Kofi. Like if, if it's like a Kofi retirement angle or some random, something random like that. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, that'd be a great way to go for Kofi. I mean, I don't think Big E can wrestle because of his neck. Yeah. So I'd rather him be healthy than retire Kofi Kingston. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I do too. I do too as well. Um, but yeah, that's all we have for AEW Full Gear. It is this Saturday, the 23rd from Newark, New Jersey. How well do you think the show will be? Well, one being the worst thing in the world, like the exploding barbed wire death match, or 10 being WrestleMania 40. I know it's not 10, so what is it? Oh man, it's it's the old college try six and a half. It passes, but just barely. <laughs> I'm actually more of an okay with that. I'm I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go one dollar, Bob. Uh, I'm going to go. <laughs> Fred said. Oh, Fred said seven. I thought he said one. Fred said seven. I'm gonna go with six. Again, I'm not excited for this card in totality at all. I, yeah, it's very it's very whelming. Yeah. I'm excited. I am very extremely excited for Bobby and Swerve. I think that's going to be a great story that's going to be told. Everything else is all right <laughs> for me. Yeah, yeah I, I could go. I could go with or go without. Exactly. Yeah, I can like. Ah, this needs more time. You know, nah, nah, you know. So yeah, and that's only because for me personally, Bobby, like the Hurt Syndicate storyline, is a more intriguing storyline for me. Um, yeah. Once I figured out that Moxie and the Death Riders was just an NWO, a Bullet Club, hostile takeover thing, I was like, oh, I'm, I can't do this again. <laughs> yeah, seen yeah. it how many times now? Yeah. A lot. Yeah, I can't do this again. <laughs> like, we can do something different. 
Um, so we'll definitely see what happens with that. And then, oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's a sidebar for the for the for the post show. <laughs> um, apparently, you're a financial advisor in Fred's life. <laughs> yeah. Read, read Why? The I'm not a financial advisor. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that, Fred. That's what we got here. Well, I gotta tell you, my financial advisor last week looked looked like a looked looked a bit like. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That's. Thank you. I guess. Yeah, I guess right. Yeah, the rest of how you're. As long as I'm not giving you the financial advice, but buy TKO. That's my advice. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're only gonna go up from here at this point. I believe so, that's. Uh, dude, they've been they've been so volatile. It's been nuts, really? actually. Jeez. Yeah, look at dude. Oh boy. Oh boy. Don't make me pull up the chart. No, do it for the post show at some point. But ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of our show this week. Is there anything that we missed, Lo? I don't think there is anything we missed. Um, what the fuck is going on with the Miz <laughs> with carrying cross? I, I, to be honest with you, I'm still trying to figure that out myself. <laughs> it's just like this is a weird pairing. <laughs> okay. You know what it the is? Boat with uh with the Wyatt Six. I think the Miz is doing a favor for someone backstage. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Raw to me has a lot of filler. Raw was very um, jumbled. We're probably gonna, yeah, we're probably going to talk more of this next week with um, Bronson Reed and Seth Rollins Here, being added into War Games. Even though Seth Rollins doesn't officially announce doesn't yet, announce but, it, I don't want Seth, and I think Bronson Reed's a great pick. It is, if it would be, because he's on a hell of a run, phenomenal run. Yes. Um, it would, but this isn't his story. Like this, this, this feud has nothing to do with him. This is family business. There is, I mean, the tongue, the Tom and Tongue and Tongue Laura aren't family either. There's an easy way you can save this from a writing perspective. If Solo, Solo has to cut a promo or he should have cut a promo saying, I never felt like family to any of you guys. I was always the odd person out because he's he's so much younger than everybody else. He's so much younger than yeah. Roman and Jay and Jimmy and all of them. But these guys, these guys took me and I feel more like family to them. And that saves the whole angle. It does. It does. To an extent, it does. Um, but he's Australian, right, I, Bronson? I, I want to say yes, but I want to say, like, he's born. It's one of those things, I think he's born in Australia, but his heritage is, like, of a Samoan nature. So, yeah, if he's anywhere, yeah, he was born in Adeline, Australia. Yeah. Um. So if you can somehow tie him to, to Samoa, to Samoan then culture, it makes yeah. sense. Yeah, Samoan culture, because you can't even do the angle of, um, oh, we hired a heavy. Because uh, the other guy, Jacob Fatu, Jacob Fatu, is the heavy, who, and he's a better heavy. Who's one of the most entertaining people in wrestling right now? I love so you low, low. so low. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I feel like that was just a joke, like backstage, and he's just kind of he's kind of doing it, trying to see if he can break solo. Yeah, because <laughs> I will. I will also say though, uh, the internet kind of set themselves up for disappointment with all those fancy cards having the Rock wrestling. It's just like no. You know what? You know, no, what? The Rock. The Rock was never going to wrestle on this card. I would. I would have loved The Rock to wrestle. Um, but however, Moana two comes out that weekend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's that's so. like that's the only issue. That's the only yeah. issue. I was like, if The Rock didn't happen to do a press tour, you know, Red One just came out and it kind of flopped in the box office, but it happens. And then Moana two is going to come out. And that's where he's going to make all of his money. So The Rock's not available. Oh, that was the Christmas movie, right? Yeah, Red, Red One. One. It is more people than Naughty List. Good concept. Yeah, yeah. Good cast. It's a good cast, yeah. Just not many people saw it. I didn't even feel intrigued to see it. I was like, yeah, like a month too early rock, but whatever. Um, but yeah, we'll talk a lot more about that for Survivor Series War Games um, and all that stuff next week. But until next week, let's get the show on the road so we can talk some Baseball Hall of Fame talk because I know you want to, Well. Oh, yeah, I saw the list was released. Yeah, we got to so talk about that not list. Gonna be, not not going to be a big class, let's put it that way. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number 394, full of gears. I am full of 
not wanting to talk about AEW Full Gear anymore. I've been your host, King Ricky Rose. You can find me on a Bachelor Base across all social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, some people's DMs, less people's text messages, maybe Blue Sky at some point. I'm, I'm actually kind of on threads. Just check that out, too. Uh, find Kings of the Rings podcast at KOTR underscore podcast across all social media outlets. Again, potentially on Blue Sky or threads or maybe both somewhere in the future. Uh, the links to all of that. Are, what the hell is Blue Sky? It's the thing that people are leaving Twitter for. Uh, oh, it's 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 liberal Twitter? I don't know what would call it liberal Twitter. Uh, have you seen the Twitter terms of agreement? We'll talk about that a little bit later in the post show. Anywho, uh, if you're listening to us, make sure to listen to us at Wrestle Addict Radio, the cure for the common wrestling podcast. Find Wrestle Addict Radio socials at addict underscore wrestle on Twitter um, and at Wrestle Addict Radio, all one word, everywhere else on the socials. Will Tarashock. Uh, yeah. But everything everything he said. I don't have any, I had something to plug, but I forgot what it was. <laughs> nice. So. Nice. Maybe I'll remember next week. <laughs> <laughs> nice. When we come back next week, we are going to go talk about Survivor Series War Games helming from uh, our great neighbors to the north who are looking really friendly these days. Uh, we're going to see what happens at the end. Uh, uh, not at the end, but uh, with the conclusion of Full Gear. Maybe someone's joined the Hurt Syndicate. Maybe someone's not. And we might get a little bit closer to crowning our first ever United States women's champion hopefully it's chelsea green so until next week folks goodbye good night we'll see you soon and someone who will never win the u.s title in my eyes is slack because fuck you slack see you later folks this has been a wrestle attic radio branded podcast